So question 8a part 1 find the minimum mark needed on the exam to progress to the county stage. So the important bit here is the normal distributed. So that's drawing our attention to the bell curve and we're just going to sketch that out here just so we can visualize what's happening in this question. And it's telling us then that we have a mean mark of 176 and it then tells us that the top 10% progress to the county stage. So we're basically looking for this percentage here that allows these 10% of students to progress to the county stage. From page 36 in our log tables, we read our percentages from right to left. So it's going this way, basically. So what we're basically looking at here is 90%. So we're going to 100%, take away the 10% that go through, which is marked in green there. But again, like I said, we read our normal distribution from right to left. So all we can examine here is 90%, the 90% the, the which is in, in white on our bell curve. And if we go and transfer that 90% to a Z score, 90% gives us a Z score of 1.28%. Uh, so the nearest one to 90%, um, the nearest percent in our page 36 of our log tables. So I'm looking for 0 0.90. The closest I can see is 0 0.8897, which is giving me a Z score of 1.28. And I'm then coming up and I'm going to solve that now to find out the percentage of the marks. So I'm filling in my Z score here and I'm putting in the X is what I need to find. My mu is the mean, which is 176 and sigma is my standard deviation, which is 36. Z is my Z score, which is 1.28. And then it's just a little bit of simple algebra here, cross multiply is going to give me x minus 176 equals 36 times 1.28 is giving me 46.08. Adding 176 to both sides, 46.08 plus 176 is giving me a mark of 222.08. Now the minimum mark though is going to be rounded up so the minimum mark that you need to receive is 223 marks because think about this, if I got 222 marks, I'm still going to be below that 10% uh, that I need. So 223 is the minimum mark needed to progress. Uh, looking now at part two. The school awarded a certificate of merit to any student who received uh, between 165 and 210, find a percentage of first year students who received a certificate of merit. Again, let's just look at our bell curve. What would this look like? So once again, again, just a sketch. We have our mean of 176. Uh, we have 165, which is below it. So that'll give us a negative when we use our Z scores. And we have 210. And we're basically looking for uh, this region between the two percentages. So I'm looking for what's the value of that in uh, percentage. I'm using my log tables again, my standardizing formula page 34, which is X minus my mu over standard deviation equals my Z. So I'm drawn to page 34 for that. And let's have a look at it. So we need to do it out twice, basically. So we need to do it out for the 165 marker and we have to do it out then for the 210 marks so let's do it out twice so my first one here 165 marks and then I'm going to do it out again for 210 marks so I'm doing out my formula twice so filling it in I have my x which is 165 marks minus my mean which is 176 over my standard deviation of 36 and that gives me my z score and for my 210 marks, it's the exact same, 210 minus 176 divided by my standard deviation, which is equal to Z. And working that out, I get minus 0 0.306 is equal to Z, and I get 0 0.94 is equal to Z. I'm just going to write that to one decimal point, so minus 0 0.31 is equal to Z, so that's my Z score. I'm going to go to my log tables and look up positive 0.31 in my log tables because I don't have negatives, it's symmetrical. And when I look up uh, positive 0.31, I 
I'm getting a Z score probability of 0 0.6217. Now I need to subtract this from one, which is giving me 0 0.3783. I'm subtracting that from one because I had a negative Z score. I'm coming over now and I'm gonna look at the uh, 210 marks and I got my Z score to be 0 0.94. Not a lot more to do with that. So the probability of Z being less than 0 0.94 is uh, from my log table 0 0.8264. And I'm practically done. All I have to do now is in order to get that yellow portion, I need to subtract my two answers from each other. So 0 0.8264 subtract 0 0.3783 is getting me 0 0.4481. The question said find a percentage, so I'm timesing that by 100 to give me 44.81%. And that is part two. Scrolling down now to part B. B part one, find the test statistics, i.e. the z-score of this sample mean. So the test statistic is coming from page 35 in our log tables. And it's written as Z for our Z score is equal to X minus my mu over standard deviation divided by the square root of N. Uh, let's find out a little bit of information here. So what do we have? We have the 21 hours here, which is my population. So that's my mu. And I have the average study time from the sample was 19.8. So that's my sample. So that's my X. I have my 60 is the number of students, so that represents my n, and my standard deviation is given here at the end, which is my 5.2. So I have all the information there, now I just basically have to fill it into my formula. So z is equal to x, which is 19.8, subtract 21, divided by 5.2 over the square root of 60, and that has given me a Test statistic of minus 1.788. And that's B part one, not too difficult there, hopefully. And B part two now. So it's asking us to find the p-value. And first thing I'm gonna do here is draw out our bell curve just so we can get a little bit of context for what the p-value is asking us to do. And the p-value is measured at a 5% level of significance. So our 5% here would be uh, 0 0.05 as a decimal, which would basically be 0 0.025. That would be 2.5% at the top end, and it's same at the bottom, 2.5%. So that's where the 5% is coming from, and 0 0.025. Working out my uh, p-value now from the first part of the question, we got a Z score of negative 1.788. And I'm gonna just go to two decimals. That will give me negative 1.79. And if I look that up in my log tables, again, I'm looking for, again, it only does positive. So I'm going to find um, the probability of 1.79. So I'm looking up a Z score of positive 1.79, which gives me the probability of 0.9633%. And again, let's go and take that away from one because we are not looking for positive 1.79, we're looking for negative 1.79. So again, if we just looked at that on a bell curve, again, it's only a rough sketch, that there would be 96%, 0 0.9633 and which is 1.79 as a Z score, but we're looking for negative 1.79, which is down here. So I'm not basically looking for all of this. I'm only looking for the parts down here. So that's why we have to subtract it from one because it's symmetrical. In other words, we're basically trying to find this here. So therefore, um, the probability of my Z, my being less than 1.79, is equal to one subtract 0 0.9633, which is 0 0.0367. Let's just rub this out because that was just our rough sketch. So what does that mean? Now I just need to multiply that by two because it occurs at both ends of my bell curve. 
So my p-value is equal to 2 times 0 0.0367, which is working out at 0 0.0734. And I'm going to times that by 100 because it's asking for a 5% level of significance. So let's turn it into percent, 7.34%. That's my p-value. What's my conclusion? So my conclusion is that since my p-value of 7.34% is above 5%, we then do not reject the claim made by this news reporter. So let's just put that into a little bit of text. Okay, so since the p-value of 7.34% is greater than 5%, we do not reject the claim made by the news report. If your p-value is less than 5%, then you do reject. So you're looking for that 5% level of significance. Uh, moving on. Uh, part C1. The school caretaker has a box with 23 room keys in it. 12 of the keys are for general classrooms, 6 for science labs and 5 for offices. 4 keys are drawn at random. What's the probability that the 4th key drawn is the first office key? Okay, so we have 4 keys being um, drawn out of this uh, box. So let's just go with K1 for key 1. We have key 2. We have key 3 and we have key four. Now the first key that's drawn out of the box cannot be an office. So I'm just gonna go not office. Okay, so we don't want an office. And my second key is also not going to be an office because I want the office key on the fourth attempt. And my third one is not office. But this is where it changes. My fourth key is now going to be the office. This is when I want the office key. I want it on the fourth attempt. And looking at these now as percentages or, or fractions, what's the probability for key one not being an office key? Well, that would be uh, the six from the science and the 12 from the general, the general classroom. So that's 18 keys. So the first key, is 18 out of 23. So 18 coming from the 6 and the 12 from the general and the science, giving me 18 and a total of 23 keys. Now I'm going to assume here, it doesn't say it in the question, but I'm going to assume that the keys are not being replaced. So when I get to my second key, not being in office, that 18 is going to reduce down to 17 because I've assumed that one of those 18 keys is my science or my general. I've taken that out and put it aside. I only have 17 of them left. But I now only have 22 keys left in the, uh, the box. So that's key number two. And in probability means to multiply. So I'm going to put in my multiply signs here. The third key is going to reduce now to 16 out of 21. And then finally, when I get to the office key, well, the office key has five of them. And that's out of how many keys remaining. I'm down to my 20th key. So I just go to my calculator now and I'm going to work out 18 over 23 multiplied by 17 over 22 multiplied by 16 over 21 multiplied by 5 over 20, which is 204 out of 1,771 as a decimal, 0 0.1152. The question said to give it to four decimal points. Okay, looking now at C part two. All the keys return to the box. Then three keys are drawn at random from the box, one after the other, without replacement. What is the probability that one of them is for a general classroom, one is for the science lab, and one for the office? Okay, so we're picking out three keys here, aren't we? Key one, I'm gonna say, key two, and I'm also taking out key number three. So I'm taking three keys. Now, what sort of orders could these keys come out in? Like the first key I take out could be for the general classroom. Uh, the second key then could be for the science, and the third key could be for, um, what's my third one, an office. So that's one possible order. Now, what's the probability of that actually happening? We could have, well, what's the general? There's 12 of them. So it could be general classroom out of 23. And 
I have 6 for a science out of 22. Again, it's not being replaced. And again, meaning to multiply, 5 for the office out of 21. And that's my total there. What's that? 60 out of 1,771. So that's one possible order. But that's not the only one. What else can we have? We could have the general classroom. We could have an office, then followed by the science room. So we have to look at that situation. And I'm looking at, here I'm looking at general science office or general office science. So or is important here. We need to include that word or. And in maths, in probability, or means to add. So we need to add on these fractions. Now, what's the probability of getting a general, an office, and a science? Well, they're basically the exact same. The order is just changing. So I've general being 12 out of 23. I have an office being 5 out of 22. And I have a science being 6 out of 21, which is still giving me the same answer. I'm still multiplying the same numbers to get me 60 out of 1771. So all I'm going to do now is I'm going to fly through all the different combinations. So what else could we have? We could have had a um, do, 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 science general office. We could have had science office general. We could have had office science general, office general science. That's it. We have six of them. Now, again, you can list them out if you want but all six are going to give me the same answer. They'll be in different orders, but they will give me the same 60 over 1771, 60 over 1771, 60 over 171, and so on and so on. Basically, I have it, what, six times? So I'm gonna cut a little corner here, just go 60 over 1771 times by six, which is giving me 360 over 1771. And the question said the four decimal points. So I'm going to hit my SD button on my calculator, which gives me 0 0.2033 as a decimal. And that's C part two. That's the end of question eight.